The Department of Foreign Affairs has still prohibited all but essential travel to almost every country in the world. There's been some talk about air corridors, setting up relationships with other countries. It seems to be quite political. It was raised in the Dáil by Leo Varadkar and on the airwaves by Heather Humphreys and by other Fine Gael ministers since then. Discussions between the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Irish Travel Agents Association have shed very little light on what happens next. It has implications for insurance. Ryanair issued a statement saying the policy is being sold on their website, which are underwritten by Europe Assistance. They say that the travel insurance will apply. Some of the evidence suggests otherwise. There is a clause saying that any journey that contravenes Department of Foreign Affairs advice or the government authority advice means that you're not covered. Not the biggest issue in the world for people travelling within Europe. The European Health Insurance Card will apply to countries like Spain and Portugal. Travelling further afield it's much more complicated, especially to very high medical expense destinations such as the United States. We're a long way from that yet. Remember it is still forbidden for Irish citizens, non-US citizens to enter the United States. That despite the fact that we have daily flights to Chicago, Boston and New York. The insurer will consider all claims. However, I, they, in the first instance, they're saying you need to go back to the airline. And look, I have friends in the, in the airline industry. So, you know, but from, from our aspect of insurance, we're saying realistically, if a country is saying no foreign visitors are allowed, whether you're flying there as an airline for freight reasons or to repatriate Americans or whatever it is, we're saying, you know, you should be reimbursing people because people are not allowed to land in the country. Runs under no event. Anybody, anybody that had a policy before the 17th of March and who had already had a booking made, they are covered for COVID-19 in the event that down the road they're unable to get a refund from uh, airline accommodation. Yes, provider. if they've got travel disruption, that would cover them. If they don't, unfortunately, then they're relying on, on, on you know, their best efforts. But uh, I think we probably made it clear from mid-February, you know, to people to make sure that they had travel disruption cover added. Lots of political pressure growing to remove the 14-day quarantine. This week, Poland added the list of countries who are reopening. They have a date of June the 16th on that. That basically leaves Slovakia among the countries that are locked down for international travel after the general removal takes place in the week around June the 15th. Key date, June the 15th, D-Day for Europe as it opens borders, and July the 1st, the great reopening of the skies announced by Michael O'Leary himself, 1,000 flights a day. How difficult is he finding it to fill those flights? We're not sure. But one major development, probably for the first time in Ryanair history, new bookings will not have a change fee. That is, if you book flights July, August, September, you can change the flight until the end of the year without a change fee. That is an extra incentive that Ryanair have put in place. And remember that while they have difficulties with a quarantine period in Ireland and in Britain, the rest of Europe, there shouldn't be those sort of inhibitions. It does mean that the consumer is going to take a little bit of convincing before they are convinced that it's safe to return to the sky. By far though, the biggest issue currently facing would-be Irish holidaymakers comes down to one word. Quarantine. 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 Obviously, we have the 14-day uh, quarantine rule in as well here in Ireland. So that's a huge um, disadvantage at the moment. Cohesion between all the countries so that we have a clear view on whether or not people have to quarantine here. That's so we can have a time scale when there's some activity. We all need to align. So we're in partnership. We need to be clear with each other about what's happening next. So fair play to Ryanair, but unless they're going to a country that we're actually allowed into and um, hotels are open and, and restaurants and bars are open, there's not much point in going there. He, I think he might be overplaying that. Um, and uh, I mean, we're certainly getting bookings in, um, not to any great degree. We're getting a couple of weeks. Um, but they are for very much later on during the year and, and into next year. And I'm talking about new bookings as opposed to transferring bookings. People who have holidays booked are clinging on to the fact that they might get away. But as for new bookings, no sign of that yet. If Ryanair are putting flights in place, at least we're going to see the mechanisms of how it's going to work. And 
for people going down to Spain and Portugal in general. Uh, the, the worry I have with a lot of the ones late in the year is that they tend to be older people that go to the Canaries maybe in October, November, December, January, February. I think older people will be really apprehensive about the two holidays a year. Dublin Airport have joined the airlines in saying that wearing of masks is necessary. The airlines want masks worn on board. Dublin Airport say they don't want anybody except passengers who are travelling inside the terminal and they want people to wear masks as they go through that process. They want to make it as contactless as possible. Big questions how that's going to work with security. But also, in the initial period, when there are still restrictions on entry to some country, a lot of people are going to have to go to the check-in desk. There is also the question of cabin bags. The airlines don't want them on board. That means self-tagging and leaving them. But it also means that a certain amount of passengers will be coming into contact with those check-in desks. From a travel agent's point of view, those key questions of cash and clarity, they are still there. Lots of questions about the refunds policy. Some of the people who were looking for refunds in March are now re-emerging saying, you asked us to wait, where is the cash now? And there are inconsistencies at the rate at which cash is being refunded by suppliers. Let us know, communicate with us, let us know when the flights are back on sale, where we stand with refunds, how long it's taken. Let's all be honest with each other and open cash flow. Of course, it's an issue. Every small business out there, every big business, everyone has the same issues. So let's be open and honest about what we're facing. If people have money there and they don't need their money back straight away and they, they're okay for us to hold on to it in the form of a credit note or a voucher, that's brilliant. But it's just, it is all about sticking together, keeping the lines of communication open and just letting each other know, listen, it's going to be two months, it's going to be three months, at least then we know. Crack on. If it's vouchers that they're issuing, they need to issue the vouchers. If it's refunds, they need to throw all of the resources as that. That will create consumer confidence. And while some suppliers have had a consistent line all the way through this crisis, others seem to be changing their policies by the week. Their operator, we're probably on to about version eight or nine of uh, their, their plan. Um, I think um, most of the cruise lines have now got cancellations uh, deep into August and some uh, right into October and November. Um, on, that's on the ocean side of it. On the river cruise side of it, uh, we're, we're well into the end of July. With Korean ultra luxury lines are, are determined to say that they're not going to damage their brand by discounting. This cruise will probably be uh, the most difficult sell for us next year, you know. Um, as, as many, many have pointed out, uh, uh, price is king. So if there's, if there's good value out there, we'll sell it. Uh, but I, I think cruise will be the last section, the last, the last area to recover. The, the buffet style meal is gone, is gone. Um, and it's going to have to evolve. Be difficult, it would be difficult for the cruise market to bounce back in the short term, certainly, you know. Uh, one or two are giving refund of taxes at the moment, but they're not giving actually refund of the actual um, cruise cost. Now, I think that's probably coming. Um, they are offering uh, credit notes, and I think at the moment they're indicating it's up to 2021. Again, our underwriters, would be, I would say they're taking it that that is compensation back. Um, but again, you know, people would have to submit a claim and, and get an official response back. If the money doesn't come in this week from a couple of the operators, because we've already, in good faith, told our customers that that was the deadline, then we, we will end up having to, to, to refund that because we can't go back on our word. It's, it's us that's having to deal with the customers. And I'm not sure that some companies really understand how important it is for agents to be given because we, we want to give good service not just average we want to be good we, you know, we, we need to be better than okay some travel agents talking about opening their doors in the coming weeks it's not normality but as sean o'casey's famous quote famously also stolen by winston churchill goes it's not the end or even the beginning of the end, but it may be the end of the beginning. Yes. My name is Owen Carey. Travel Wrap is commissioned by the Irish Travel Agents Association. The views here are my own.